Italy will be looking to pull off a massive shock and beat the Grand Slam champions on Sunday. My name is Mark, let's talk rugby. So this one is on Sunday, 5th of February at Stadio Olimpico in Rome. Kickoff is 3 p.m. GMT, so that's Ireland or UK time. The last six in the six nations between these, so last year, France 37, Italy 10. 2021, Italy 10, France 50. 2020, France 35, Italy 22. 2019, Italy 14, France 25. 2018, France 34, Italy 17. 2017, Italy 18, France 40. So a few blowouts in there and a, a few of them that were you know a little bit closer than that. Odds are Italy 14 to 1, France 14 to 1 on, the draw is 50 to 1. Now let's have a look at the two teams, starting with Italy. So fullback you have the World Breakthrough Player of the Year, um, Agi Kakuozzo. Then on the right wing, Pierre Bruno. In the centres, Juan Ignacio Brex and Luca Morisi. On the left wing, Tommaso uh, Menoncello. At the halfbacks, you have Tommaso Allen and Stephen Barney. Into the forwards, loose head, uh, Delino uh, Fischetti. Hooker, Giacomo Nicotera. On the tight head, Simone Ferrari. In the second row, you have Nicolo Canone and Federico Ruzza. At uh, back row, then Sebastian Negri, Michel Lamro, and Lorenzo Canone. That's a pretty tidy back row there. On the bench, we have Luca Bigi, um, Federico Zani, Pietro uh, Cesarelli, Eduardo, I don't know how to say this guy's name. Ichazi, I think it's something like that. Um, I've never, honestly, never heard of the guy. Um, then we have Giovanni Pettinelli, Manuel uh, Zuliani, and then just two backs on the bench, Alessandro Fusco and Eduardo Parabani. On to the French team then. So we've got uh, Tomo Ramos at fullback, Damien Pinot. Right wing, centers Gail Fiku and Yoram Mofana. Left wing, uh, Eaton and Dumortier. The halfbacks, familiar pairing, Roman Entmac and Antoine Dupont. Into the forwards, loose head, Cyril Bai, Julian Marchand at hooker, U- Uini Antonio, a uh, huge guy on the um, tight head. The second row is uh, Thibaut Flamand and Paul Willemse. Back row then is Anthony Jelanche, uh, Charles Olivon and Gregory Aldrit. Again, another tidy back row there. Some amazing back rows running around in the Six Nations. Um, onto the bench then, we have Gaetan Barlow, uh, Reda Wardy, Sipili Falatea, uh, Roman Tau Fifinua, uh, Thomas Lavant, Seku Makalo, uh, and then again only two backs on here Nolan Lagaric and Matthew Jalabe. So, in terms of caps for these two, then, um, for Italy, backs of a total of 158 caps. The forwards, 197. So the starting 15 had 355. The bench, they have 141 caps to bring on. The total in their 23 is 496. That's less than a lot of the starting lineups from the other games this weekend. For France, then, backs is 215. Forwards, 228. Starting 15, 443. The bench, 84. 
and then the total is 527. So neither of them, you know, hugely experienced um, overall, but there are some decent experienced players there for them. In terms of Italy, then, they'll be looking to, you know, obviously make progress from last year. They got that one win against Wales. This year, you know, they don't want another winless Six Nations. They went far too long without a win uh, here. As I said, they've gone for a 62 split on the bench. Uh, this game might be a little bit attritional because of that. You've got Capuoza there, you know, the um, World Rugby break through player of the year in 2022. But you've also got Bruno on the wing, who's been in great form for, for Zebra. You've got Brex there in the centres. Um, that guy can make things happen. He's got lovely soft hands and he's got an eye for a break as well. Um, then this guy, Eduardo uh, Iachizi, um, he could make his debut from the bench. He plays in Pro D2 in, in France. I don't watch any French rugby. I just see them kind of in the in the Heineken Cup, so obviously haven't seen anything of him, so can't enlighten you too much about how, how he's going to go. Um, overall, they are a pretty inexperienced side, but they do have, you know, uh, Lamro there, uh, captain in the back row, guys really turning out to be, you know, a real gem and growing into role as the captain as well. He's been in great form in the URC. We have um, seen like Parise has announced that he's retiring at the end of the season. He made very obvious overtures of the fact that he's leaving the door open for, you know, an international swan song at the Rugby World Cup. Personally, I think that that would be a mistake because then, you know, the likes of uh, Lamoro are going to be in the shadow of Parise. And I'm not sure, you know, how much he's going to add to the team at the World Cup either. I think it, it's it would be a good thing for Lamoro to lead this team to the Rugby World Cup and, you know, bring the, the, the team out of Parise's shadow. At halfbacks, then you have Alan and Varney. They look to be the preferred uh, halfback combination for um, for this team uh, going forward. So, you know, building that combination between them um, and you know, really getting that to stick and to work by the World Cup is going to be kind of a, a part of what they want to do through the Six Nations. Um, you know, it would be an amazing upset if they uh, could do it. They have beaten France twice before in the Six Nations back in 2011 and 2013. Both of those were in Rome, but this is a very different French side that they're facing. And, you know, even though there aren't that many caps in the French team as well, they still have the big guns on there. Um, so it would be a huge ask for them. In terms of France, obviously defending Grand Slam champions, um, you know, they're not going to want to kind of roll over and um, they also want to be the the first team to defend the Grand Slam as well. Um, so, you know, they, they, don't, they don't want to start out badly here. So expect them to really put Italy under pressure. We do have, though, the backdrop of, you know, Laporte suspended prison sentence corruption and um, probes into the, to the Rugby World Cup and stuff like that, really not looking good for them uh, off the field. So they'll want to, you know, put some smiles back on faces with a decent win to start. They've got uh, no Woki or Villiers uh, both out of the tournament with injury. Again, they're gone f they've gone for a 6-2 split on the bench as well. We have um, young winger uh, Dumortier. Um, he's on debut on the wing with Villiers out. Um, Jamine is left completely out of the 23 as well, so no room for him uh, in the matchday squad. Also another um, debutant, uh, Lagaric, um, from the bench of scrum half. He looked pretty tidy when I saw him for Racing 92 this year. Um, apart from like the the last six in the Six Nations, France also beat uh, Italy in the Autumn Na Nations Cup. 
and in a 2019 Rugby World Cup warm-up game. Um, on the bench, though, they have less than 100 caps to bring on. So there's not much, you know, if if France did find themselves behind, there's not much experience on that bench to bring on to, you know, to, to maybe settle things down and guide them to, to a victory. But I think that um, Galtier trusts the squad to do their business here. So what do you think? Is it going to be another blowout France win, a tight one? Do you think Italy might even sneak it? <laughs> 